setting up large geometry 3270 displays for using ZXTC at Marist College. Hi, I'm David Cole, President of ColeSoft and Chief Architect of the ZXTC Debugger for Assembler Programs. This video will show users of TSO and ISPF at Marist College how to change the display geometry in Vista TN3270 emulators to increase the display real estate, how to change ISPF to use novel display geometries, how to recover from skewed displays when TSO or ISPF fail to properly recognize a terminal's display geometry, and how to change the display geometries in other 3270 emulators. Okay, let's get started. To begin with, here's how ZXDC looks on a typical Model 4 3270 display. Mod 4s have only 43 rows, each being only 80 columns wide. XDC is doable, but there's really not much real estate here. The display lines are cut off at the right, and the register displays take way too much space at the bottom. It's a shame. It's a shame because both TSO, ISPF, and ZXDC all have the capability of supporting 3270 displays of much larger geometries, and all workstation emulating programs have the ability to manage larger displays from the mainframe. Check it out. See what I mean? So why don't we see more users using larger displays? Well. Perhaps it's because the system changes needed to do it are obscure. And many sysprogs and most users simply don't know how to do it. Well, here's how to do it. The first thing you have to do is tell your 3270 workstation program to manage larger displays. With Vista TN3270, that's pretty easy to do. You just need to get to Vista's host IP dialog. Often, this dialog comes up automatically when you start Vista. But if it doesn't, just click on the File menu item to open up the file dropdown. Then click on Reconnect Ask to open up Vista's host IP dialog. Probably, you will see Mod 4 selected. Instead, click the User Selection. And then enter the display geometry that you want into the height and width fields. For ZXTC, my personal preference is 62 rows by 142 columns. But on small display screens, this large geometry may result in a font that's too small to see comfortably. If this is a problem for you, then feel free to experiment with lower numbers until you get something that works the way you like. Then click Connect and it's done. At first you won't see anything change. That's because the Marist welcome screen is always displayed in 24 by 80 mode. So just go ahead and issue your LTSO command and then your TSO user ID and then press enter a few times once for each time you see three stars until you get to the TSO login panel. Then type in your password. But before you press enter, here's a tip. Be sure to select reconnect down here at the bottom. This will be real helpful in case your connection ever gets dropped. But let me just mention that selecting reconnect is actually a bit tricky. It doesn't get hardened until you actually issue a log off command, which usually you will do much later. So if your session comes to an end for other reasons, the S will be gone the next time you log on and you'll have to type it in again. But once the S is hardened in, it will always be there. But its presence is real helpful for logons that are reconnects. Yet it does not create any problems for logons that are not reconnects. So why IBM does not make this the default setting is a mystery to me.
Go figure. Anyway, once you press enter, that'll take you into TSO. Then press enter a couple more times and you'll finally get into ISPF. Let me make a couple of comments here. First, if along the way you encounter some skewed displays, well, stay tuned. I'll tell you how to deal with those before this video is over. Second, this display from ISPF is still 24 by 80. Here we went to all this trouble of telling Vista to manage larger geometries, but ISPF is still sending 24 by 80s? What's that all about? Well, we've told Vista how to handle larger geometries. Now we have to tell ISPF to send larger geometries. To do that, we need to get to ISPF's settings panel. And to go there, we just type a zero and we press enter. And that will take us to the top portion of the settings panel. But the fields we need to change are lowered down. So we just press the page down key. And that will bring what we need into view. Here are the two fields we need to care about. The screen format value and the terminal type. They both need to be set to threes. Then when you press enter, the change will finally take place. Okay, function three takes us back to the ISPF primary panel and a D now takes us to ZXCC's startup panel and we're ready to go. Well, that's all how it's supposed to work when things go right. But when things go wrong, it ain't pretty. What if you logged on and suddenly you see these weird, skewed displays? Well, we can deal with that. And here's how. The first thing we have to do, basically, is to get logged off. But we can't just disconnect the terminal. We actually have to formally log off the TSO session. And you do that with the same commands you normally would. You just have to enter them into the skewed displays. So don't panic and look carefully. Because when you do look carefully, you'll see that all of the display is still there. It's just skewed. In particular, the three stars are still there. And just like always, that's our cue to press enter. And that will take us on into ISPF, which also will be skewed. So we need to get out, and in order to get out, we just press function key three. Hopefully that will take you out of ISPF and back to TSO. But if instead it takes you to another skewed ISPF screen, well, you can still find your way out of here. But maybe the easiest thing to do at this point would be to contact either your professor or system operations and ask that your TSO session be canceled. But if you don't get unlucky and you do get back to TSO, then you can finally perform a formal log off. You'll see a skewed logged off message followed by six stars. Six stars is TSO's way of telling you that the message will time out in maybe three seconds or so. So eventually you will at last get back to Marist's welcome screen where everything is all happy again. Okay, so if we've logged on the normal way, and got skewed at displays. Well, we got to log on in a different way. And here's what that is. It's rather arcane, but here's how to do it. Remember before we issued an LTSO command? Well, if we're having problems with skewed displays, we can't do that. Instead, we have to issue a logon user ID log mode equals dog for charlie 32 xx3 command write that down even if you don't need it at marist 
you may well still need it elsewhere. I'll read it again. It's log on, user ID, log mode equals dog for Charlie 32XX3. I told you this is arcane, but this log mode operand is something that will work on most TSO systems worldwide, not just at Marist. So it's very much worth remembering. Anyway, pressing enter will take us directly to the TSO logon panel where you type in your password and don't forget to type in the S if it's not already hardened in and proceed as before, only this time without all that ugly skewing. Press enter and again Type equals zero and press enter. Page down. Set both screen format and terminal type to three and three. Press enter again. And now ISPF will start sending larger displays. And finally, we can get over to the ZXDC startup panel with a simple equal D. All right, there are a lot of TN3270 programs out there, not just Vista. IBM's PCOM is a common one. Attachmate's got one called Extra. And there are dozens, literally dozens, of other no-name programs that all will work perfectly well. They all support customizing the terminal geometries. And ZXTC's internal online help has a topic that goes into specific details about some of them. But how do you get to the online help? Sorry, that's a topic for the next video. I'm going to wrap this topic up right now. If you have any questions or want additional information, feel free to contact me directly. My email address is dbcole at colesoft.com and I can be reached by phone at 540-456-6518. We also have a web presence on our own site, and on Facebook, and on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. Bye-bye.